Hello. Today's title says it all. You are not perfect, and so you should be shooting your images in RAW. Let's go. So today's video is specifically geared for three specific groups of people. The first are people who don't really understand what raw images are. Uh, the second is for people who may have heard of them but don't really understand the full range of their benefits. And the third is people who might understand that they would benefit from shooting their images in RAW but think that working with them is somehow more difficult than working with a JPEG. If you are not one of those three groups of people, of course I encourage you to keep watching, but it's going to do nothing more than uh, just reinforce good habits, which is a good thing as well. So a raw image is the information essentially that your camera recorded before compressing it into a JPEG format. And there is something in the neighborhood of four to six fold as much information in your RAW file than there is in the JPEG. And you can specifically increase the dynamic range of your end result of your image by shooting in RAW and being able to pull highlights and in particular shadows back into your finished file. So it gives you a lot of latitude in editing. Now, you're not perfect, neither am I, and you're going to make mistakes while shooting. The RAW image is going to give you the capability to fix those mistakes or working in really bright or really dark or really extreme conditions, it's gonna let you fix those types of dynamic range issues without too much difficulty. As an example, recently my wife and I went on a trip to the lovely city of New Orleans, we had a great time, and I was shooting some images on Decatur Street and I made a mistake. I set my exposure just too bright. I didn't pay attention to my histogram, uh, and I should know better, I've got a video on that, but I didn't pay attention to my histogram and I was too bright and I blew out part of the sky. And so I also happened to have my camera in RAW plus JPEG mode where it records both file types for each image shot. I do not normally shoot that way, but I had it set up that way uh, to shoot some example images of a book that I'm writing. So I happened to have a mistake that shot as a RAW and a JPEG at the same time. And so what I wanna show you is working with this image in my photo editing program. Uh, for me, that's Capture One, but it would be the same for any RAW conversion or editing software. Uh, working with these files, I'm going to edit the RAW file to get the information back that I want, and I'm gonna apply that same edit to the JPEG, and you're gonna see the extreme difference in the results from shooting RAW to shooting JPEGs. Without further ado, here we go. So these two images here started life as the same file. Right now, nothing has been done to them. And you're seeing as I go back and forth that there's a color richness difference between them. That's entirely because the RAW file, which is this one, as you can see, it says ARW, which is my RAW file extension. Uh, it's just recording a greater color palette than the uh, JPEG. Uh, which just looks far more muted. So already we have a difference, and we haven't done anything yet. But in particular, I wanna take a look at this area up here where I overexposed the shot. So as you can see by my histogram here, there's a marginal amount of information. I had room on the dark side to darken the shot. I neglected to do so, and so this is an overexposed image. Uh, so. That's a, my bad on that part. Uh, but we're gonna try and bring some information out. Now this was shot as RAW plus JPEG, so it started off as the same file. So we're gonna take this one, and what we're gonna do is try to bring in our highlights. And right there, uh, I actually was able to bring in a pretty decent uh, amount of highlights. I wonder if I can bring in a little bit more without it turning gray, and that looks pretty good. I bet I can bump the saturation and some contrast inside of it and make a pretty reasonable image. Now what I'm gonna do is copy those exact same edits so that they are, they are identical and I'm just gonna to try to apply them to the JPEG image here. Remember, this is the same file and I apply them and that's what happens. There was no information remaining in the sky and so it just turned gray. It didn't actually produce any additional information. I bumped up the saturation, but because I had so much color lost between the two files, uh, I really didn't have anywhere to go. And so as we can see by one simple example, just shooting the image in RAW, I was able to correct some shooting mistakes very simply and create a usable image. 
So I hope that that was useful. Uh, as you can see, raw images have a lot of capability to them, uh, so much more so than JPEG. And not only that, they're not more difficult to work with. In fact, I would argue that because we can get what we want faster, we work with them for less time, so they're easier to work with than a JPEG image. Uh, as always, if this has been useful for you, of course I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe. It's free, you knew that, and thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I'll see you next time.